Hey guys, Bonk here. The Punish game has a lot of aspects to it. Edge guarding, tech chasing, juggling, comboing, conditioning. But the single most important aspect might just be ledge trapping. We're gonna teach you how to master that now, but first, our question of the day. What part of Ultimate do you think is the hardest to master? Go ahead and tell us in the comments below and we'll get to teaching you. The best players in Ultimate can get 50% or more by pushing an opponent to the ledge and holding them there. They can take a stock at under 100% by conditioning and reading the opponent. They make a spot of invulnerability one of the worst places to be. If you want to learn directly from the best, just head over to ProGuides.com where we have courses from the top pros themselves. You can also check out our live classes here on our YouTube channel. You can check out these free live classes right here on this very channel, Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications so you know as soon as those classes go live. But don't worry, we'll tell you a few ways to improve your ledge trapping right here, right now. At its base, ledge trapping is simple to understand. You push an opponent to a point where they have to grab the ledge to survive. The opponent has a window of intangibility. During it, they can pick from only a handful of options. You trap them by guessing or reacting to the option they pick and then countering it. At first, it's basically like rock, paper, scissors with some swords, guns, eggs, and birds thrown into the mix. But once you add in all the things different characters can do off of the ledge or around it, once you add in two frames, weird hitboxes that hit under the ledge and intangibility duration, once you add in a huge mind game around timing and option selection, it becomes one of the deepest parts of the game. To tackle it, let's start by breaking down the mechanical end, starting with reactions. On the ledge, a lot of hits come from reactions. Players at the top level become so accustomed to ledge trapping that they can see an animation, know it's a roll or a normal getup, and react. Normal getup, roll, and getup attack are all reactable. Roll and getup attack are the most punishable ledge options at high level because they have the most lag. Normal getup is reactable, but the window for punishing it is small. Jump isn't technically reactable, which means it can be safer. However, some moves will beat both normal getup and jump because they catch the jump while it's vulnerable and before a player can input a dodge or attack. That means if the ledge trapper sees their opponent isn't picking roll or getup attack, they can use some options to cover both normal getup and jump. Everything is easier to react to when it's expected. So really good defensive players don't just mix up their options, but their timings as well. The reaction windows, even for a roll, can be pretty tight, so a new timing can throw someone's reactions off enough to miss time a punish. One simple way to get better at ledge trapping is to learn the animation cues you need to react to and the normal punish timings. Another way to improve is to learn about Legend Tangibility Decay. It's basically a formula for how long your Legend Tangibility lasts. Here's what you need to know. You gain more time intangible the longer you're in the air. You lose intangibility time based on your damage. The max intangibility time is 2 seconds. The minimum time is roughly 23 frames, or a bit less than half a second. And the ledge grab animation is 19 frames long and counts towards that intangibility time even though you can't act during those 19 frames. What all this tells you is your opponent has more time to think and hang on when they're lower percent and after spending time in the air. At high percents with little air time, they have barely any time to think. Like 4 frames of time to think. On a mechanical level, this means you can pick on a high percent opponent by hitting them with a move that goes under the ledge. They might not expect it because they aren't used to having such little time. On a mental level, this means that a high percentage opponent is more likely to just pick an option, especially if you hit them off the ledge at high percents earlier on. This means you can rely on reactions more with high percent opponents since they'll be scared of mixing up their timings because delaying could get them killed. How vulnerable each character will be at ledge also depends on their hurtbox. Big round characters can be easy to hit off the ledge because their hurtbox is large and doesn't drop very far. Some Fire Emblem characters are harder to hit because they dangle by their hand, lowering their hurtbox. Regardless of character, every player has a frame 1 defensive option once they're off the ledge. That's right, shield. Because shield is frame 1 and because most players expect to get hit when they get off ledge, they'll shield after they normal get up, roll, or land from jumping. This makes grab a naturally good ledge trapping option a lot of newer players pass up on. Players can beat grab with spot dodge or drop down aerials or by dashing away or jumping to a platform. But don't be afraid to grab, especially if you think the opponent will normal get up. 
or roll. If you can pivot grab your opponent after the roll, you could get that nice back throw yeet kill. Now that we've covered mechanics, let's talk about the mind game. To distill the topic down, we're gonna get a little grade school and break it into four words, all starting with P. Practice, position, patience, and patterns. Practice is the most mechanical element of the mind game. To be good at ledge trapping and really anything in Smash or in life, you gotta practice for a while. In ledge trapping, you're practicing reactions. You want to get used to spotting the enemy's animations, reacting, then picking the right option at the right time. A lot of optimal punishes for ledge options will require you to be tight on your inputs. If you want to land a dash back forward tilt on an opponent, then you'll need to read the animation and tell your brain to dash back, turn around, and tilt in a pretty tight window. It can be pretty hard to practice some of this stuff in training mode, meaning you're probably going to have to find a sparring partner to help you out. This is what you practice in Let's Trapping, timings and reactions. And there are a lot of timings and reactions to practice because there are a lot of options you can select. The options increase when you consider position. The next word, position, is something you see pro players do all the time. They'll walk to a very specific part of the stage and stand there while the opponent hangs. This is so they can cover some options really well. The two big positions you should know right away are near the lip of the ledge holding shield and about roll distance away. The ranges for these positions can vary based on your character. For example, if you play Samus, you really want to learn the distance that Shard Shot hits roll. That's a super powerful position where Samus mains can react and hit both normal getup and roll. And you're hitting with Shard Shot, so you're probably getting a kill. The position near the ledge can cover a lot of options, and you hold shield to block a getup attack or a drop down aerial. Getup attacks have so much lag that they're easy punishes. Normal getups can be punished with grabs or out of shield options. Rolls can be punished with B reverses, back airs, or turnaround tilts. And you can jump out of shield to get underneath an opponent if they jump. But you can't do as much about some drop down aerials, especially disjointed, safe ones. At the roll distance spot, you often can do more about drop down aerials. You're far enough away that the aerial will probably miss, but you're close enough that you could run up to the ledge and punish the re-grab. You're also at a great range to dash back and then whiff punish. The roll distance is really great for, you'll figure, catching rolls. Since you're very close to the opponent, you can catch them with most of your moves, including grab. However, depending on the character, the roll distance can have a harder time punishing jumps and sometimes neutral getups. Positions offer a mind game of their own as well. You can sometimes position roll distance specifically to encourage your opponent to jump or normal get up, and then you can get a hard read. Your positions and your practice will change if your character has unique hitboxes or items. Characters like Diddy Kong can put an item in a spot that prevents an opponent from picking a certain option. In Diddy Kong's case, the banana cuts off both rolls and normal getups. If you're facing something like Diddy Kong's banana, it becomes a battle of patience, waiting for them to jump first or the banana to fade. And of course, that brings us to patience. In ledge trapping, impatience often spoils the opportunity. Many new players make the mistake of committing to a read before they've even opened the book. You see that your friend loves to roll in, so you immediately stand roll distance away and charge a forward smash. Your friend isn't that dumb, so they just jump or normal get up. The read may have been good. The mistake was getting impatient and not trusting your reactions. Remember that rushing in and committing to an action is the easiest way to give up a ledge trap. If you immediately start pressing jab to hit normal get up, the opponent will get up attack. Even worse, if you're stuck in rapid jab, they'll roll behind you and pants you with a forward smash. Even if you have an eye on their patterns, you need to wait for them to commit. Now we're down to the final component, the pattern. Ledge trapping is all about predicting an opponent's option and responding. Prediction comes down to pattern. As you ledge trap opponents, look for options they like to pick. As opponents get better, try to match their options to circumstances. What do they pick when they panic? What do they pick based on your positions? As you read patterns, you prep your brain to react to options, making your timing more consistent and your punishes even bigger. You can also condition patterns using positions and attacks. For example, you can rush an opponent off ledge by threatening the area with retreating low lag aerials. They'll feel like they have to do something soon, and then they'll pick a quick, probably grounded panic option. MKLeo does this a lot, to really great effect. Remember that shields become a part of the pattern too. Players will want to shield after the ledge trap, and reading shield tendencies can get you free grabs and extend your advantage. 
And as one final tip, know that a lot of players understand patterns will get them punished, so they vary options, which in turn becomes its own pattern. Some players will never do the same thing twice, which means one option is always off the table. There it is! Ladies and gentlemen, Dart Wizzy representing... Now that you know the four P's of ledge trapping, you hopefully have an idea on how to get better at it. It's a tough part of Smash to master, but the more you work on it, the more wins you'll get. If you want to improve even further, then just head over to ProGuides.com, where you can get guides from the very best players.